When I first started my career, I shot weddings. That's how I really learned about photography. That's how I made my living for many years and how I saved up enough to be able to move into editorial photography. And once I discovered editorial portraits and started seeing some of that stylized portrait work from other photographers that I really looked up to, that was something that I just felt like I really need to do that. It was a curiosity of mine that I couldn't shake. And I got into that and I still do editorial portrait photography today as well, but the next thing that I started to become really interested in was advertising photography. I loved the idea of working with a really large team or a really large crew, getting to bring a really big idea together and being a part of this really cool process. One of the biggest hurdles in my photography career was making that transition. I was used to editorial photography and in that sense, when you get a job or when someone calls you for an assignment, they really tell you a lot of the fees, you know, your creative fee and what they're willing to pay for equipment or digital processing or travel if that's part of the project. And so a lot of that's just dictated to you, which in some ways takes away a lot of the stress of trying to figure out what to charge. Now, part of the problem with editorial photography is the budgets are really low, so it's hard to make a living just shooting editorial photography. But then moving into advertising photography, rates are completely different, not only because it takes more time, but there are more expenses. It's a completely different animal than editorial photography, and so you need to know how to bid for an ad job separately than you would for an editorial job. When I first started getting calls for advertising photography, I had this whole strategy in my head. I thought, I'm gonna act like I'm a pro. I've been doing this for years. I don't want anyone to have any doubts or worries that I could handle this. And so I would go onto the phone call or wherever, if email, if I was first interacting with a client, and I would just act very confident. I wouldn't ask very many questions because I thought asking questions would make it seem like I don't have any answers. And that was not what I wanted people to be thinking. And so I would take a call and they would give me a little bit of information and I would get off the call and they would say, all right, you know, send an estimate in by tomorrow or in two days. And as soon as I got off the phone, I went from just being totally excited about talking to someone about this really cool potential project to realizing, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what they're expecting to pay. I don't know what my actual expenses are. I was completely at a loss. That's a really dangerous place to be in any business. No exceptions. You've got to know what it costs for you to run your business. You also need to know what the value is of the product that you're offering and you need to know how scarce is it. Are you creating something that no one else can provide or are you creating something that 30 other people in your town can provide? Those are all things that are really important for you to understand and have a grasp on. What I started to learn as I went through this process is asking questions, not just any question, but specific questions that allow me to get at the heart of what the client's looking for and also allows me to get a better understanding of what it is that they're expecting from me, that's gonna put me in a much better place to provide an accurate quote and estimate than if I just get off the phone and you know, act confident. One of the questions that I think is most important to ask is what is your budget? Now there's nicer ways to say it. I tend to soften it and say, do you have any sense as to what type of budget it is that you're working with? Ask it in whatever way that makes most sense for you. A lot of people push back a little bit on this question especially when we're talking to photographers, they think, oh, I could never ask that question. Or sometimes when we bring it up to a client, they get a little bristly. I understand that. If I had someone come over and they were gonna fix my washing machine, let's say, and they asked me, what's your budget? I'm gonna just ask them to tell me what it costs. Because when I hear that question, what's your budget? It does sound like, how much can I charge you? I just want you to tell me what it actually costs and I'll see if I can pay that or not. But it's a little different when we're talking about photography because there are so many different ways to do a project. So let's say I get a call and someone says, we need you to do a portrait shoot. And they'll say, can you get me an estimate? I could get you an estimate, but there's still so many other questions that I don't know yet. It's not that I wanna know how much can I make from this project, but I wanna truly know what are your goals? What do you want this picture to look like? Especially if let's say an ad agency called me. So the ad agency is your client, but you also have the client that the ad agency is working for. So you're really trying to make sure that you're meeting the goals of both of these two companies. Well, is this the first time you've worked with this client or have you been working with them for five years? Do you really need to impress them and make a really great first impression? That might mean we might need to get a, a nicer studio that's gonna cost a little bit more. Do you want this to be really scrappy and you've talked to the client already and they don't have a big budget and they wanna try to get a great product but they do need to be cost conscious and they're not gonna be upset if we don't have 
really fancy catering and that sort of thing. We could go out and get a box lunch. We could buy a meal from a restaurant. We could have someone come in and cook on set and it would be amazing, but it's obviously gonna be more expensive. We can have a hair and makeup artist. We can have two if we, we need to keep things moving faster. The, the list goes on and on and on uh, what, what the situation and what the setting is that we're gonna be providing. And all of those expenses are things that add up. They add up like crazy. And if you just say, yeah, I'll provide all those things and you don't really know what the expectation is, we could be tens of thousands of dollars off what they were expecting. I could be really high or I could be really low. You don't want to come in really low because it looks like, oh, you know, he really doesn't know what he's doing or she's way too expensive for us. It doesn't mean that I always have to charge this certain rate. It's just that if I don't ask the questions, I don't really know what your expectations are.